In the previous tutorial, we started writing a Java application that takes in uh, an IP address as an input argument, and it displays the country that the IP address is in. And we decided to use a web service that does this thing for us, and we just display the results in the console. So essentially, our Java application is just calling a web service and getting the work done. And uh, in the process of writing that code, we looked at the visual and we generated the stubs using WS import. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use those stubs in our code to actually make a call to the web service. So let's do that now. I'm going to use these in my project. So how do I do that? So I'm going to open up Eclipse again. And uh, all I need to do is import these classes to my Eclipse uh, project. So if you look at these classes, you can see that they're in the package net.webservicex, right? So that is the package in which it's generated. This is again customizable in WS import, but let's not bother about that now. So I'm going to create a package here called net.webservicex. Okay, so now it's very simple. All I do is drag these classes into my project, into this package. So I choose to copy the files. So I have all the classes included in my project. Okay, so now we're all set to do this. We're all set to call a method of a class which is local, right? Instead of the stub, I use the stub that's generated over here. Now the question is, which one of these is the stub? We said WS import is going to generate the stub for us. And when we ran WS import, it had generated nine classes, right? There are nine different classes over here. So which one of these classes are we supposed to use as the stub? In order to answer the question, we need to look at the visual. So if you remember, when we opened up the visual, scroll all the way down, you remember we saw this visual colon service, right? The name of the service was geo ip service and the service had a port called geo ip service soap okay so we're going to use these two names to in order to find out what class we need to use so here you see these two classes over here geo ip service and geo ip service soap so these two are what we're going to be using okay so first let's start with geo ip service so now i will create a new instance of this GIP service. So I'll use the new operator and say GIP service, I'll call it some name, is a new GIP service. So I have created a new instance of the service. So once I've created an instance, now if you look at the methods of this IP service, you see that it has something called as get geo IP service soap. Okay, so I'm going to use this to get an instance of this class, right? So I have this, I started with this class, created it with a new, and then I used a method of this to get an instance of this. Okay, so these are the two classes that we are concerned with. So now get geo IP service soap returns an instance of geo IP service soap. So I will put that into a local variable. This is, this is our stub, okay? So we can call methods of this stub and actually make a call to the web service, okay? So now if you look at this object here, it has a method to get the geo IP. So this happens to be the actual method. So you notice here, the Java doc says, get geo IP enables you to easily look up countries by IP address. So it's no, note that it's actually not returning just a string with the country name. It's actually returning an object of geo IP. So I'm going to call this method and I'm going to pass in the IP address and I'm going to capture the return type in the 
object that it's actually returning. Okay, and I'm going to import this as this one. So this is actually the class that we are referring to over here. Now, this should ideally contain the return type. So basically the country name or any other information that's actually returned from the web service will be contained in this one. Okay, this could be a string. It could be, a, you know, a universal data type like an integer or things like that. Or it could be a custom data type, in which case WS import generates that custom data type for us and we can use it in our program, right? Notice that this is not a basic data type here. It's a custom data type, but WS import has sensed that and it has also generated that class for us. So we can actually use that and get hold of the return type. Now this return type should contain all the information we need. So if you look at geo ip dot get, you notice here you have a country name you have a country code. I'm interested in the country name, so I'm going to just print this out. And this is our client. We are done. So now I have printed out the country name for the IP address that we have passed. So just to quickly recap, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new instance of the service, which is the service name in the visual and I'm creating a SOAP object from it, which is the port name in the visual, and I'm calling a method of that port, of that intermediate object. Now, this method is actually making a call to the web service, so I'm gonna pass the input argument to this method. This does a call to the web service, gets the response, and then puts that response into a custom data type, which is again generated by Vistal. And I'm using this custom data type to get the output. This last step might not be required in some cases. Again, like I said, this could be a generic data type like a string. If this returns a string, you don't really need a custom data type. But I chose this example because you get to see a custom data return type as well. Okay, now it's time to run this. So what I'll do is, save this and of course pass in the input argument. So I go to run configuration and uh, in the arguments I pass in the input argument. So let me just get some random uh, IP address. Let's do a check of IP address for google.com. Now Google happens to be in this IP address. So I'm going to copy this and pass that as the input argument to my program. I hit run. And you can see the console output shows United States. So google.com is actually hosted on a server in the US. Now let's take another example. Um, let's take an example of, uh, let's say, bbc.com. This, I hope, is in the United Kingdom. Let's verify that. Just to make sure we test a few different countries. I pasted the IP address for bbc.com and now I run it. And then yes, it shows United Kingdom. So basically this is just a simple test of a web service uh, using a Java client. So we got the visitor and we generated uh, the stubs using WS import and we wrote some code to actually use the stubs that were generated and get the output of the web service. So one thing that is generally confusing for most beginners is basically these all these classes. You won't know which class to use and uh, you know how to start. So like I said, these names depend on the service, right? You use a different service, you get obviously different set of classes with different names. So basically you need to either look at the documentation that comes with the web service. Most of the web services do come with documentation that says, hey, go ahead and use these classes in order to generate, uh, in, in order to issue calls to the web service. But uh, if you do not have documentation, the best clue is the visitor itself. You look at the service name, so there should be a class which corresponds to the service name. So you create a new instance of that class and uh, you use a method of that class to get uh, 
an instance of the port. So the service will have a port in the Vista. So look at that name in order to get hold of the actual port. And then the service will have a get port method. And using that, you get the port and you can call methods on the port to make the actual web service call. So if this is confusing, don't worry too much about it. This is just to get our feet wet and, you know, do a simple web service call. Uh, subsequently, in the next few tutorials, we're going to be writing our own web service, right? We're going to switch gears and we're going to go to the other side. We're going to write web services that can be called by such programs. And we'll understand a few more details about what all these things are and how they work. Thanks for watching.